week on Electric Samba Project, we test cell level fuses for our EV's battery. Charger. For those of you that might be watching this for the first time, the Electric Samba Project is a weekly video series following the conversion of this old BW van, otherwise known as the Samba, into a fully electric vehicle. The project is just over a year old, but the first seven or eight months were spent doing metal bodywork that modified the look of the vehicle and it repaired any of the rust that this 57 year old car had. Only then could the actual electric conversion start. All the major components were chosen, purchased and installed within the next couple of months. And even though the electric Samba is currently operational, it is still very far from being done. One of the main reasons for all the work ahead is that one of my original goals for this vehicle is not yet met. I originally set out to build an EV that would drive 100 miles or more between charges. In its current form, the Samba has given me a maximum of 65 mile range and even though there are things I can currently do to improve on it, like cutting down drag by installing 20 of the 23 windows, I am afraid the only way to reliably and consistently meet my range goal is to change the current 21 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery with something bigger but yet lighter. As you might know, batteries are the electric car's Achilles heel, if you will. If lithium battery technology had existed in the turn of the century, we would all be driving EVs today. But unfortunately, they didn't arrive until 80 years later. And so we find ourselves in our current position, where a 100-year-old invention that can and has been proven to be better than the current method of propulsion has trouble catching traction. All the battery tech of the past was just not good enough to compete with gasoline engines. But lithium is finally here, and electric cars can finally have their chance they deserve. These batteries come in many different chemistries. One of the safest adopted by the do-it-yourself electric car movement has been lithium iron phosphate. It's non-toxic, highly recyclable, and it's very stable. It doesn't require cooling, it doesn't explode, and typically does not catch fire like some of the other chemistries can. This is the reason why I originally chose this type of cells for my Samba. The problem is that even though now it's considered old technology, first generation lithium, it's still rather expensive, and the energy density is not the best with 90 to 110 watt hours per kilogram. That means that my 22 kilowatt hour battery comes in at 480 pounds and occupies all the area where the old gas tank used to be, plus most of the Samba's floor space. If I want to meet my 100 mile range target using lithium iron phosphate, I will have to spend roughly another $7,000 and get really creative finding space for all those additional cells. So the alternative is to look at another chemistry, like the one used on the best electric car today. That would be lithium cobalt cells used by Tesla's first on the Roadster and now on the Model S. They use mass-produced cylindrical 18650 cells commonly found in cordless power tools and laptop batteries. They are small in size, very light, and very powerful. Cost is about the same as lithium iron phosphate, but the advantage of lithium cobalt is that it comes in about half the weight and size, allowing my Samba to go further using a battery roughly the same physical size and weight of the current one. In previous episodes, I showed how I decided to experiment using recycled cells harvested from old laptop batteries. I discussed how I came to the conclusion that I will need 4,600 cells, and all the work required to package all those cells into something that can be used to power the Xamba. 
couple of weeks ago I even got to test the first of 30 modules I will have to assemble and today that work continues. One of the challenges with these type of cells is that they are not as safe as the iron phosphate ones. The higher energy density of this chemistry makes it more prone to catching fire. So Tesla has designed very clever ways to build safety features into their battery packs. One of the most unique and clever safety features is a cell level fuse used in every battery. Each one of the 7,000 cells used in the Model S has its own fuse designed to blow if the cell develops a short. This feature is very important, especially in my case since I'm using all recycled cells. So I have decided to experiment to develop my own cell level fuse system. Looking at the leaked Tesla battery pack pictures found online, it looks like they use a very simple low-tech wired fuse on each cell. Okay, that shouldn't be too hard. I just need to test wires of different diameters until I find the one that blows at the desired current level. To find the desired current level, first I have to figure out what's the maximum amperage each cell will see under normal use. To find that, you take your EV system's maximum power consumption, in my case 650 amps, you then divide that into the number of parallel cells in your battery pack. My design will have 150 cells per module, so each cell will see a maximum of 4.33 amps. So the wire fuse has to be able to handle 4 to 5 amps. So let's test some wire. Here I have some tiny wire I have laying around. Let's see how it does. I built this 9 cell module to see how it could be used to connect bus bars to each cell. This thing right now is going to see 4.4 amps. So it's not supposed to blow. It's supposed to withstand it. Let's try it. Here we go. Five seconds, six seconds. So there's nothing. There's no power going through them yet. Okay, there's 700, 1.7, 2.8, 2.7, 4, 4.3, 4.4, 4.5. Alright, so it can withstand the maximum amount of current that I'm going to ask to go through it. And I already actually did a test and it lasted more than 5 minutes, so I'm never going to ask for 5 minutes. It's going to be like 30 seconds at max. Let's try, if that's 5, let's try 6 amps. This is the first little cable that I tried, just because that's what I have available. Okay, 700, 1.71 amps. Ooh, you see it? Oh, you see that? Boom! That was, and what did I say? How many amps? Seven amps? Six. Six amps? So if one of those batteries, one of those batteries in like a big giant module like that happens to just go wrong, shorts out, that's what will happen to that little thing, just and then it's just gonna be done. So it looks like I have found my fuse cable. It blows at 6 amps. So if I want it to blow at higher amps, I could just double it up and then it'll be around 12 amps. I think I'm ready to try it full scale in a big module. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, make sure to catch next week's episode for more Electric Samba adventures. Uh, next week. lost our wheel right here folks if you enjoy my videos don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and join the conversation down below by leaving a comment 
Uh, if you don't, then also leave me a comment so I can make these videos better. Thank you.